Hello everyone, it's Lindsay and I'm here today with a pretty simple process video for you guys. I had some requests over on YouTube to do a tutorial using some Inktense pencils. I haven't used these a whole lot recently, so I thought, great idea. Here is the list of the colors that I'll be using and I will have all the products mentioned in the video down in the description box as well as over on my blog for links to all those, so you can check that out. But today I'm going back to my roots. I'm going back to just uh, loose watercolor florals and hand lettering and this is the reason I almost did not uh, post this video uh, because of this right here where I flipped my Bible upside down to work on it upside down um, because of the way I was going to do the arrangement I ended up being slightly off screen and I fix it here in a few minutes but you got to bear with me some of its off screen but I decided to go ahead and just roll with it that way you can see it happens to the best of us I don't always get perfect shots, but I tried, <laughs> I try, I try to, so I'm just going to leave it. But um, I'm going in with dry intense pencils and sketching in some florals. Now, I don't normally work with the pencils this way, going directly to the paper, because these lines are hard to dissolve. But I'm actually going to use that um, purposefully in this entry today because I want those lines to be seen. So uh, I'm going in very loose. Like if a botanist studied this, they would be like, what the heck, Lindsay? Those are not florals at all. That's okay. I want just very loose abstract florals and sketching them in. I'm not pressing super hard. I'm not applying too much pigment. These are very, very intense pigmented uh, pencils. And so it doesn't take very much color at all. Um, and so I'm just going to go in dry lay down all of the elements dry and then go back in with a just slightly damp not wet not dripping wet just damp paintbrush um, so what I do is I like dip it in the water and kind of like run it over the edge of the jar of water just to squeegee out any excess water so it's just damp and then I'll go in and activate the pigment and you'll kind of see how that goes as this progresses. Now, I want to talk about the verses, so I'm not going to talk a whole lot about the technique. So if you have questions, be sure to jump down in the comments and ask me questions down there, and I will address them. Um, but I, this isn't any different than some other videos I've done with Inktense pencils, so it's nothing crazy. So I am working in 2 Corinthians, and I'm specifically documenting chapter 4, verse 9, but I'm going to talk about some of the surrounding verses. Now, I'm gearing up to teach a Bible study through 2 Corinthians in August at my church, and so you're going to be seeing tons of 2 Corinthians, I'm sure. Um, we are working through the book uh, All Things New by Kelly Minter. I will link that down below for you guys, and it is wrecking my world. I picked up several different Bible studies um, when they asked me to lead a study this fall. I picked up several to go through. And when I look, when I kind of read through this and worked through this, it was so timely and so perfect. And so I hope that it gets a good response from the ladies. If anything, it's healing my soul. And it is teaching me something as I go through it. And so I have just had such an amazing time working through this book and such an encouragement. And it's just been amazing. And so... Uh, second Corinthians is written by Paul. He is sending a second letter to the Church of Corinth, um, and they are a fallen society, a lot like where we are today. They have a lot of the same struggles that we have in our society today, and so Paul is kind of addressing that, encouraging, um, explaining his ministry, and sharing some of his trials and things like that. And so um, I don't know about you, but... I think a lot of us went in and thought, okay, being a Christian, our lives are going to get better, lives are going to be great. But unfortunately, as Paul shares, that is not a guarantee. And in fact, um, we are instructed several times through Scripture that as Christians, we will face difficult times, not if, it's when. And so here in chapter 4, verses 7 through 10, um, we're kind of looking at that. And it says, But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. And so what Paul is saying here is that um, this, this imagery of jars of clay, that our bodies, that we are, um, as humans, we are like fragile, ordinary, commonplace 
jars of clay like there was at that time. Um, and so as we go through these, these trials, it's not about us. It's about what we carry within us. Um, and so I think a lot of us, or I, I know I speak for myself personally, when I go through difficult trials, I get in this woe is me, this inward reflection. But actually, that's not what it's about. When we're going through those difficult times, it's actually an opportunity for God to shine, for us to point to God, for God to show off and show how big and great and loving and miraculous he is. Um, and we are just the vessels that get to carry him as he is doing that. And so, you know, I look back on my own life and some of the trials I've been through, gosh, the last two years, even as a Christian have been some of the most trying times in my life. I mean, it has tested my faith in ways I never thought possible. Um, and then I look back to, you know, a few years ago when my husband and I were facing divorce, I've, I've shared with that quite a bit on my channel. Um, we were at a point where we were at the brink of divorce. I'm talking, I was moved out, papers drawn up. It was over. Um, and it was an opportunity for God to show up and God showed up big. He showed that he is a God of restoration. He restored my marriage in ways I never dreamed possible. And now I, my husband and I, we get to go out and we get to shine that light. We get to uh, share with others and point others to Christ and show in our lives how God showed up. Um, and so that is what Paul is talking about here is that we are going to face difficult things. We are going to be struck down. We're going to face afflictions, but we are not going to be decimated by it. God is in us and he gives us that strength. And if we can look to him and give him the opportunity to show up, He's going to he's going to do big things. Now, that doesn't mean that it's instantaneous. Sometimes those trials and afflictions last years and years and years and years. I know that's horrible, but we just have to have this hope that God is there and he will show up. And it may not be how we want him to. <laughs> it may look a little different, you know, but he he can and he does. And so uh, Kelly says here in reference to these verses, she says, if you've ever wondered what your pain is worth or if any plausible purpose could accompany your sufferings or if you're hurting so deeply, you're not sure you care either way. Well, then these verses and man, I've I've been there. I've had that. I don't I don't care either way. I don't care what happens. <laughs> um, and so I wanted to document these verses real quickly, specifically that verse nine that says um, persecuted, but or Yes, uh, sorry, struck down but not destroyed. And so that will be my title on this page, struck down, not destroyed. Um, we will be brought down to the brink of breaking, but God has the ability to lift us up from that. And he did in my life over and over and over and over again and continues to do it over and over and over again. Um, and so I would encourage you, if you are feeling a pull from God to teach Bible studies. I know that that's scary. I'm scared every time I go into it. I've been doing it the last couple years. Um, I am by no means a teacher. That is not my profession or my expertise. Um, don't feel like you need 50 years of Bible knowledge to lead a Bible study. Um, this Bible study has a video that goes along with it. The book kind of leads it. I just facilitate it. Of course, I do a lot of study ahead of time. I listen to sermons, read commentary. I'm kind of OCD and want to be like 110% on everything. So I kind of go over the top um, trying to get prepared to facilitate it. But um, there's just some amazing things that come out of leading a Bible study. And so I can encourage you maybe just grab a group of women at your home and lead a study like this now something that I've really had on my heart for about a year now is I would love to facilitate a Bible study online with you guys but I'm not quite sure how to do that so if you have some ideas leave a comment shoot me an email um, there is something to be said about the the conversations that happen in a Bible study between the women in the study not just how teaching down to you, but the conversations that happen around the questions. And so I'm not quite sure how to facilitate that online. Um, a Facebook Live would not necessarily allow for that. It would all be, you know, typing out your questions and answers and things like that. And I don't know that that's the best way to do it. Um, maybe a Google Hangout. I'm not quite sure. I'm not familiar with that. So if you have some ideas, shoot me some ideas and we can talk about it. 
But I would love to bring a study um, and maybe even this study once I've done it um, with my church and bring it to you guys. And so if that's something you're interested in, please let me know. Um, I would need to do some more research and figure out how to work that. But um, you will probably be seeing lots more um, Bible pages as I work through 2 Corinthians. I need about five journaling Bibles to get all my thoughts down because there's just so much. Um, you can see on this page, I did not do any journaling. All of my journaling is in my Bible study book and my other Bibles I'm using um, and things like that. So I don't have enough room on here to journal everything that I'm thinking about and learning and things like that. So this is just going to be really basic, pulling little nuggets out as I study, getting them down on the page with some color, and that is it. So um, you can see I just did some simple hand lettering and did those watercolor florals. Like I said, if you have any questions about the technique portion, leave those down below. Check out the description box to links to the products, links to the Bible studies if you have questions, anything like that. Um, also over on my blog, there will be those links and some close-up photos. And give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. Be sure to hit that bell button so that you are notified of any future videos. And until next time, thank you so much. Bye-bye.